Okay, carrying on with the further diagnosis on this particular engine, it's a DT-466, diesel turbocharged, 466 cubic inches. And we've already gone ahead and done the compression testing on it and recorded the values on a chart so we can look at it for further diagnosis. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna plot out the crank balancer on the engine so we know which position the valves are in. And then this way we can set the engine up for different timing points so we can go in and adjust valves or maybe even check where the pressure is leaving the engine based on doing what's called a cylinder leak test. So the cylinder leak test is gonna determine in which position the blow-by or crankcase or cylinder pressure is actually leaking out, okay? And a lot of times it does leak into the crankcase and we call this blow-by. It can also leak by the valves, it can leak by the head gasket. There's all sorts of areas in the engine that it can leak. So we have to further these tests to do the diagnosis. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take a look on the very front of the engine on the balancer. And I've already gone ahead and I've set up number one top dead center on our timing index pointer. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to plot out the uh, firing order on the balancer of the engine. And the firing order on this particular engine is 153624. So I'm set at top dead center number one. And then I'm going to take our protractor and I'm just going to line up the protractor with a line that I'm going to make on the top of the balancer that gives me my top dead center number one reference point. So from there I'm just going to take my protractor and I'm going to set it into the front of the balancer and this one just happens to fit very nicely. And I'm just going to line this up with zero. When I have the zero point lined up here I can count out the split on the valve timing events. And how we do that is we take the uh, 720 degrees of theoretical duration that it takes for the intake compression power and exhaust stroke, gives us 720 degrees. We take a six cylinder engine, so we take that 720 degrees, divide it by six, which gives us 120 degree uh, difference between each valve timing event. So what I'm going to do is the very first one is I'm going to line this up to be number one and I'm going to mark it on the balancer. Then I'm going to follow around and I'm going to go 120 degrees apart and I'm going to make my next intersection line at 120 degrees apart and then I can put my next firing order in place. Then I can rotate the engine, or I don't have to rotate the engine, I can just carry on to another 120 degrees on the protractor. And I can set this point now, and on the balancer, so I know where my timing point splits are. So you can see on the front here, we are split 120 degrees apart to give us six individual timing reference points based on top dead center of this particular cylinder. The reason we have to do this is we want to find where neutral center line is. And if we take the reference point from the top dead center indicator from the manufacturer, and then we line these all up and we put them in the corresponding number position, we can set the valves or set the piston at the right height so that when we put pressure in the cylinder, the engine will not rotate. So I'm just gonna go back here and I'm just gonna follow through and I'm gonna write these timing events on here. So we have also in the cylinder what is called, or in the engine, what is called companion cylinders. Companion cylinders are two cylinders that run together. They help each other out. One would be on one particular stroke while one is on another stroke. Okay, so usually we are on a compression stroke or getting to the power stroke while one is exhausting. So on the very first one here, it's going to be the companion cylinders that we plot on our 120 degree splits. So we have number one, top dead center, compression stroke, which we are on, and then number six, 
and I'm just going to write this on here that we have number six. Then I'm just going to rotate the engine. It's easy to rotate right now because the injectors are not in it. And then the next split here, the next companion cylinders we have, are cylinders number three and four. So I'm going to write down number three and number four on our balancer. Then I'm going to rotate the engine one more time. And then we have two and five, our last cylinders. So number two and number five. So we mark that down. So we have one and six, three and four, two and five as companion cylinders. So when we bring these back up to the position, then we know which one we are testing when we're doing our cylinder leak test. Okay, so taking a look at our top dead center timing reference point indicator, there's one on the block, and then there's one on the balancer. And one of the easiest ways to see all the timing reference marks, and those marks are used for fuel injection timing. So it's just to take a piece of chalk and color in the timing marks. And we press nice and hard in there to get the chalk to go down inside the grooves. And then just take your finger and wipe off the remainder. Okay, so I can see there's my index point, the top point, top dead center. Okay, and then it shows timing marks 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Okay, it shows all the timing reference points that you need for actually setting injection pump timing. But the one we're concerned about is the top dead center indicator, and right at top dead center, number one is what we're looking at. Then when we rotate the engine all the way around to number six, we will have it on our timing reference point on the balancer that we're doing number one. Then we rotate it around until we get to number six, then we will be on number six compression stroke. So the, how we check this is to make sure that the valves are rocking on this particular cylinder. So if we were to check number one, both the valves should be rocking. If we were to check number six when we're all the way around on the next stroke, then number six should be rocking. Anytime they're rocking, we're at top dead center compression stroke. Okay, so taking a look at the cylinder leak test tool, we have a pressure regulator on here, our shop air inlet pressure, the pressure that reads on the gauge and the percentile that leaks by into the cylinder when we install it into the cylinder. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our dummy injector again, like we did in our compression testing series, and we're gonna take this dummy injector once it's in the cylinder, make the connection, the air that flows through here, the percentile that leaks into the cylinder and beyond is gonna read here. Now, we shouldn't see any more than about 20% as a maximum for permissible cylinder leakage. Anything more than that indicates that there is a problem in the engine and there needs to be further diagnosis through compression testing and cylinder leak testing and other visual and tactile uh, diagnostic tests to determine where those particular problems are in the cylinder. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just show you how you set this gauge up because it's all relative to the amount of pressure that comes in from the shop. So if I make my connection with our shop air pressure, I can see right here that I'm running somewhere close to about, almost close to 100 pounds of pressure. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust my regulator. And you can see the gauges move when I adjust the regulator. What I wanna do is I wanna set the orange gauge at zero. And when I'm set at zero, then I have a reference point for my percentile of permissible leakage. It's always good to take the tool off, put it back on, and make sure that we are set at zero. And I'm just gonna fine tune this a little bit till I get to exactly where I wanna be. So we have close to about, oh, about 95, maybe 98 pounds of pressure coming into this particular gauge. And then it's gonna leak by at a controlled rate into the cylinder based on what the cylinder capacity has to hold that pressure. So what we're gonna do from this point is I'm going to take our dummy injector and I'm gonna install it into cylinder number one. 
And cylinder number one, based on where we just set the timing reference point, is on top dead center compression stroke number one cylinder. So when I install this dummy injector, I should be able to put my, my leak tester on and then either hear where the air is leaking out or see where the air is leaking out if there is any fuel or any oil related to the problem with that particular setup. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down and then I will install our leak tester. And now plug it into our cylinder. Now I'm just going to leave these gauges sitting here and you can hear there's an audible tone. And based on the pressure of the gauge and I had said that the permissible amount is about 20% and you can hear that there is a leak here. So looking at this gauge, you can see there is about, or oh, there's over 20% of leakage. So you can hear where that's coming from. Now to further the diagnosis, and I talk about this on the side of exercising caution, you can hear air pressure, and I can hear it coming from the intake right now. So that's a good indication that I may potentially have an intake valve that's leaking, or something related around the intake portion or the induction system itself. So I'm going to take my stethoscope and again, leaning on the side of caution, we do have an open void in here. Okay, so anytime you're subjecting your body to anything around air pressure, we have to be very cautious about air embolisms. It's not an awful lot of pressure, but we do need to be safe. Okay, so all I'm going to do is use the stethoscope to further my diagnosis and I have to look in various places. If an intake valve is leaking or not seated or misadjusted, we may run into the condition of hearing an audible tone like this, okay, on the intake. If it was on the exhaust, we would hear it coming from the exhaust. If it was leaking down into the bottom of the engine, we may want to listen to it at the dipstick tube. Okay, because that's going to now allow pressure to go by the rings down to the bottom end and we would hear it coming up through the dipstick tube. The other place is if the valve cover was on it and we were doing it with the valve cover on, we could listen at the top of the valve cover to determine if we had any leakage by the valve guides and the valve stems themselves in the engine. So if I put on my stethoscope, I'm just going to listen here and it's very loud as an audible tone. I'm going to go around and listen on the exhaust and there is an audible tone on the exhaust which is telling me that I have an intake valve leaking and an exhaust valve leaking. I'm just going to listen on the bottom end and I barely hear anything on the bottom end which indicates to me that right now I'm dumping a lot of the pressure through the intake and the exhaust and barely anything's going down into the bottom end which is good that it's not going in the bottom end but we're losing the available pressure that would be in the cylinder to create complete combustion. So all I'm going to do at this particular point because I'm on top dead center number one is I'm just going to take my screwdriver and wrench and knowing that I'm on top dead center number one I can hear that I'm leaking through the intake and I can hear I'm leaking through the exhaust and I can feel that these valves are tight. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to back these valves off and see if that's the particular problem. And I hear a slight tone difference. Now I'm going to go over to the intake side. And there it's gone. Okay? So, I can still hear a little bit of leakage. And it sounds like I'm leaking just down around the bottom of the injector cup. So I'm just going to have a listen with my stethoscope again. and it sounds like I'm leaking down around the bottom of the injector cup. So that may be an indication that the dummy injector has a bad seal or potentially that injector cup or sleeve is defective. And this happens quite often with these engines down here because we take them apart so frequently and put injectors in, take them out, put them in, take them out. So that ends up causing wear in the bottom of these cups and causes a potential defect. Um, so at this particular point, I know that these valves need to be adjusted and I, now I have clearance 
just like top dead center number one on the compression stroke should show that both the valves are rocking. So I've backed these off and what I would do from here is go in and make sure I set the valves to the corresponding valve lash adjustment. That lash adjustment is what's going to allow for wear in the engine and to compensate for temperature of operation. Cold weather contracted, hot weather or operating temperature expanded. So we have to have that buffer in there for the wear and for the expansion and contraction ratios in the engine as it functions. Carrying on to the next position, and again, going by firing order, one, five, three, six, two, four, one, five, three, six, two, four. Okay, so the next one in line after we've been going through the process is number three cylinder, and this is one in particular that we seen some problems with when we were doing the compression test. And I wanted to hone in on this one in particular to maybe try and find out where the problem was. So again, our gauge, and I'm just gonna go back and check the calibration of the gauge again one more time. Plug it, unplug it, or unplug it, plug it back in. This makes sure that the shop air pressure has not changed, and it has not changed the percentile that this gauge is calibrated to. So we're still good there, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this now, I'm gonna plug it on to number three cylinder and hopefully hear no audible tones. And I hear through the intake again, and I can hear it coming out the exhaust, okay? So we would confirm our diagnosis again using the stethoscope. And again, I can hear it very loud through the intake. I can hear it through the exhaust. So next thing I'm going to do is to take my screwdriver and socket and if these valves are tight which they are because there's no rocking movement and we're at top dead center number three cylinder then we should hear no audible tone so I'm just gonna back these out and you can hear the intake has stopped but you can still hear a light tone on the exhaust so again you hear the intake if I crank this down that's the air that's leaking by the gauge through the cylinder, past the valves and out the intake or out the exhaust. So I'm gonna bring this back. I'm just gonna put some lash into it based on my feel. And of course, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna reset the top end based on a valve lash adjustment procedure, which there is a video on. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm just gonna back the exhaust off and we should hear no tone. There we go. So now we, all I hear is a small bit of air leaking by this particular fitting on this adapter. And it sounds like to me it's just at this shop airline fitting the female coupler. Okay, so that's taking care of the problem at the intake and the exhaust. And again, to confirm the diagnosis, I want to make sure I use the stethoscope and listen and I hear nothing coming from both positions which tells me that I've gone ahead now and made the, the adjustment correctly that it traps the pressure in there. So now we have a permissible value for leaking on the gauge. Okay, so continuing on with the diagnosis, we're gonna go through the entire engine for compression testing, one to six cylinders for our initial diagnosis. Make sure you do record the information. Then you would go through the cylinder leak testing and then you would do a cylinder leak test also on it to determine where the faults are, make the correct adjustments for adjusting the intake and exhaust valves, replacing any seals for the injector cups or the injector cup or sleeve itself. And there is other videos for instruction on doing that replacement. Um, and then also the other thing is, is because this is a lab engine, it's not connected to water. One thing that we need to take into consideration is when we're doing this testing on chassis is that there is going to be a radiator connected. So one of the things that we have to do is make sure that we open up the radiator cap and look for potential bubbles that may be leaking through the engine components and then allowing compression pressure or cylinder leak pressure pressure to actually enter into the radiator showing bubbles, which indicates that we have a cracked cylinder head, a potentially failed head gasket, maybe liner O-rings leaking, where now crankcase pressure is going into the bottom end and leaking by the seals and pushing air up into the cooling system. 
It's not good to have air in the cooling system. We create what's called aeration. We create bubbling, foaming in the cooling system, and then we create uh, cavitation in there, which is really detrimental to the health of cylinder liners. One of the ways we combat that is by using what's called a SCA, service coolant additive, or a DCA, which is a diesel coolant additive for combating some of the chemistry-related problems by allowing combustion gas to get into the bottom end of the engine and then via into the cooling system, destroying the cooling system and related components. So we go through this engine completely. We set the valves and uh, adjust them all, put the injectors back in, and then we'll do a running test to see how well this engine runs at the very end. Um, you can look at other supplemental training videos on Fanshawe Online. And just remember, anytime you are doing diagnosis, protect yourself for safety and record all your information so you can look back with your foreman, your manager, or for yourself for doing the diagnostics on that particular style of engine.